everyone. Hey everyone, welcome to our first yeah, property investment opportunity webinar that we're running here on our neighborhood co-ownership program. Um, the objective of this webinar is to take you through the Greenpoint property market and what investing Greenpoint looks like and then our opportunity that we have available at the moment. We are going to start very shortly. We're just going to give everyone two minutes uh, to join while we're waiting just in terms of people who will join later or people who haven't attended the webinar live, a recording will be sent to everyone who registered for the webinar. So you'll be able to watch um, <clears throat> the webinar post the, the live event. I have sent a message in the, in the chat just in terms of um, booking a call with us, a one-on-one -on -one call with our investment team. I'm handling uh, the majority of those calls myself at the moment. Um, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Sinjin. I'm one of the co-founders here at Neighborhood. And my colleague and co-founder, Kim, as our head of brand and head of design, is also on the call. Uh, I've done various things at, at Neighborhood and now are responsible for launching the co-ownership uh, investment offering that we've got available at the moment. So Kim will present to us just a bit later. Just to, uh, um, We're going to just wait another minute and then we will start with the presentation. If you can just post in the chat where you're calling in from, we'd like to know uh, where everyone's calling in from. I think we've got people from all over on who've registered for the webinar. So it would be great to see our digital nomad friends and remote workers. You can post where you're calling from. Okay, we'll start in exactly one minute. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Um, like I said, for all you people who are going to join later or, or watching this on the recording, it will be available for you. If you do have any questions, please shoot them through. Um, our invest line email is also in the chat um, and it'll be on the end of the presentation as well. So if you do need contact us for any reason, uh, you can do so via one of those channels. Our investment portal is live on our website as well, but we do suggest that you book a call with our investment team prior to, to transacting. The portal is very new, just been launched, uh, and you may have some questions. On the portal is also a more detailed presentation of the offering that we will chat about. The, we are just going to chat about specific uh, aspects of the investment. There is a detailed investment uh, proposal document and a full investment prospectus, public investment prospectus that is registered with SIPC on the website as well. So for more detail, you can look at it there. And like I said, really recommend that you book a call with us and we can take it from there thanks guys as you guys are posting in the chat that's great um we uh, i see there are one or two of our investors on um who are joining as well which is good perfect i'm going to take you guys through so i think in terms of the greenpoint property market this picture here demonstrates sort of visually why we believe greenpoint is such a good opportunity its location and, and sort of that uh, arrows sort of pointing to where our properties are located in Greenpoint. You just have this beautiful, beautiful area uh, sort of between the CBD and C point, sort of a midway between those two. And it's right over the road from some of the best lifestyle activities in, in Cape Town, um, certainly near the CBD as well. So you've got the CBD on your left hand side, you've got the world famous uh, VNA waterfront, the harbor. And then you've got the Granger Bay precinct and all the aspects around the, the Greenpoint Stadium, Greenpoint Park, and all those things, which we'll chat about uh, in the presentation. Just really, and then Table Mountain in the background, of course. We all uh, love our mountain here in Cape Town. So uh, just most of you being to Cape Town and travel to Cape Town understand the value proposition. Um, and we believe that's really articulated well uh, through Greenpoint, which is why we've invested in there and we continue to invest there. So we've got Two, two locations currently operating with a third on its way uh, in that same area. It's our most desired destination for digital nomads and remote workers living and working in Cape Town. Why we love Greenpoint, as I mentioned, it's centrally located between the CBD and C point. We'll chat a little bit about what transport looks like between the different areas and the travel times associated with, with 
those. And because of its proximity to these lifestyle elements and its attraction, its, its proximity to the Cape Town Stadium, which holds multinational events uh, and programs, we see a very strong demand for short and medium term accommodation, which is largely one of the biggest drivers of our business um, and investment into the property. So we see very, very strong demand, uh, obviously uh, stronger over times of events and activations in summer, uh, but equally so with, with our B2B relationships and corporate uh, group travel, uh, we see a lot of that happening over winter as well. We like Greenpoint because it is a less densified um, area. So if you look at the CBD, it's obviously highly dense. And then you look at C points a little bit more dense as well. So Greenpoint has these this amazing um, benefit in that it's almost suburban. It's got beautiful gardens, there's pools, you know, both of our, our properties there have access to a pool and a garden, um, which make which what makes we us believe that 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 area certainly offers um, you know some better lifestyle attributes than some of the other more densified areas. And then the proximity to more of the lifestyle elements, Greenpoint Park, a beautiful park to take a picnic, uh, play a ball sport, or just enjoy the gardens for the day and relax and unwind. That is literally over the road from our Greenpoint locations, less than uh, 500 meters away. You've got the VNA waterfront pretty close by, uh, the Seapoint Strip just two kilometers away, uh, the Seapoint Promenade, which is very well known for walks, hikes, roller skating, rollerblading. Uh, people often do that on, on Monday evenings uh, in the summer specifically. And then you've also got access to all the good hiking in and around the the Cape Town Central area. So Signal Hill, Table Mountain, and of course the famous Lion's Head. If you're doing the Lion's Head hike in summer, I uh, recommend you go early. It does get very, very busy. Perfect. In terms of Greenpoint, the suburb itself, this aerial um, image shows the outline of the Greenpoint precinct as it borders the CBD to the bottom right hand corner of the image. We've got the Cape Town CBD uh, heading uh, a bit north. You've got the VNA waterfront area with its shopping districts, uh, markets and uh, and the harbour itself as well. There's lots to see and do. It's the number one visited tourist destination uh, in South Africa. So most people know about the VNA waterfront. And that is uh, all of this is within a two, two kilometer radius of Greenpoint. Uh, if at the, just over the road from, so as you see, sort of down the middle where the Greenpoint uh, uh, text is, that is Somerset Road. And on the ones on the bottom side of Somerset Road, you've got the Greenpoint suburban area, which is where our properties are located, and all the residential and commercial accommodation is available there. And then at the bottom of this image is Signal Hill. So. What you see is between the water uh, or the coastline and uh, which is bordered on with the lifestyle elements, the golf course, Greenpoint Stadium, Greenpoint Park, uh, where there's uh, you know, no real uh, accommodation available. There is on right on the coast at Mully Point. But what you see is two geographical barriers to Greenpoint. So the one is Signal Hill. Obviously, you can't develop further up Signal Hill and you can't really develop on that lifestyle aspect of, of uh, Greenpoint. And then you've got the coastline. So there's very, very limited real estate in that area. And this is why we like Greenpoint. We believe that the, the supply is relatively constrained because of those geographical barriers and um, limitations on, on development within the area and why we believe it's so suitable for um, turnaround, building turnaround opportunities because a lot of older homes or, or short uh, guest houses and things like that, which have this amazing, amazing location, um, but are not yet modernized for the for the modern consumer. Kim who's on the call, she'll take you a little bit more in detail of what we've done to the property and what we've got planned for the property, and just a little bit more about our process when we transform these properties. So she'll join us shortly. She is on the call, but she'll be presenting shortly. Um, and then just to the left of this image, you, we've got our, the Seapoint area with its Mojo Market and High Street sort of shopping area uh, and all those aspects that the Seapoint um, precinct is well known for. So we sort of see this Greenpoint area as being right in the middle between all these, all these opportunities. 
just in terms of some travel times and what that looks like traveling between the different areas. So one of the best ways to get around Cape Town is, is our My City bus system, which uh, from Sea Point is about 11 minutes. VNA waterfront's 15 minutes and the city's 20 minutes away. Uh, these are longer than your travel times by car just because of the, the many stops uh, that are on the way. So you can really hop on and hop off wherever you need to uh, at the, in terms of, of those destinations. The stops on the routes are in this map image to the bottom of, of the screen. And there are various stops with on those different routes and the different lines. To travel by Uber, Uber is a good way to travel around Cape Town as well. Uh, it's very affordable here in South Africa. And the, obviously those travel times are much, much, uh, uh, much less. So you from Sea Point, you're looking at six minutes, the waterfront less than two minutes away, and the city nine minutes away. Walking distances, um, uh, most of the Europeans on this call are, are more used to walking around further than some of us South Africans, especially um, you know the ones who live out in the suburbs the walking distances are, are fairly short so in terms of sea point we're just over two kilometers away the vna waterfront less than 700 meters and the city two kilometers away so very walkable in fact i walk often from our cape quarter uh, location into town to our east city location and uh, i've walked many times from cape quarter to greenpoint itself as well and around this whole area to the waterfront so there isn't really a need to have a car if you're located in this area, which is one of the other reasons why we like Greenpoint. It's very, very commuter friendly and a good place to base yourself to have access to all these, these aspects. Another map of the My City routes, uh, just a bit zoomed out. So you can see that they also extend all the way down to beautiful Camps Bay um, with the Camps Bay beachfront and the Camps Bay strip. Um, and then up to Cliff Neck, where you've got access to the Table Mountain hiking tracks and the pipe track uh, and Signal Hill. So really everything is accessible um, from Greenpoint and, and around the, the city and the City Bowl area. Looking into the Greenpoint property market, um, we've just sort of taken some, some detail from a Property24 report. Property24 is the leading uh, listing property channel here in South Africa and they record all the details in terms of number of sales and sales volumes and prices and, and all that sort of data um, and what we see is that over the last 10 years the suburb of Greenpoint for a sectional title development sectional title units have grown at an average of just over nine percent a year the property value is essentially doubling over the last 10 years and the number of sales within the area is still being quite low. So last year in 2022, we saw 271 uh, sales uh, representing a fairly small segment of the market. So property quite tightly held. And because of those geographical barriers and the proximity um, to, to those lifestyle elements, uh, very attractive to hold on to the properties in, in this area. Perfect. Just to move on to our the opportunity that we have available in Greenpoint at the moment, available on our co-ownership program. So for those of you not uh, certain yet of our co-ownership program, essentially what it is, it's investment into the underlying real estate. So on a fractional basis. So we take the property, all of our properties are held by a property owning company, and then we sell shares in that company on a pro rata to equity basis. So if you, for example, let's take this property, it's 10 suites, uh, 15 million rand, 10 million rands worth of equity required. If you invested a million rand with us, you would own 10% of that property and you would get 10% of that property's uh, dividends, revenue less operating expenses and uh, paid every six months and you would get 10 percent share of the capital appreciation over time we've got uh, five million rands worth of debt with fmb commercial property finance that's making up the balance of, of the purchase price so onto this property um it's 10 suites um what we call a suite is a is an ensuite bedroom private bedroom and bathroom and you, all your living spaces are shared. So your kitchen is shared, your living areas are shared, your outdoor entertainment areas, your pool, etc. cetera. Um, it is a co-living property for us as a, as a property type. So it, it, it 
really functions on, on good shared economy principles and, and shared use of space. We purchased the property in 2022 um, and we did an initial uh, very, very brief uh, capital renovation to the property initially to get it ready for the summer period. And it's about to go through the second phase of that renovation very shortly. Um, we've just had a uh, group booking uh, uh, client with us who's been staying in the property for, for some time and we needed, needed them to, to finish their use of the space before we could, could get handed back over to the design and, and facilities team to change it. Perfect. In terms of uh, the next phase of, of this webinar, Kim, our head of design and brand, she's going to be taking you through um, what we've done to the property and what we've got planned for the property going forward. If you do have any questions, apologies, I was uh, due to say that earlier. If you do have any questions, you can post them in the group. If we miss them or, or you need more detail, we'll be contacting you directly. Um, and then we'll try our best to answer them as we go through the presentation. Thanks, Kim. Uh, over to you. Hi, Sinjin. Can you hear hey, me? Hey, Kim, there? I can hear you fine. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, so great to see people from around South Africa, but also Europe. Awesome to have you guys. So um, I'm also, as Sinjin mentioned previously, I'm a co-founder um, with himself and I'm also the head of brand. So for me, it's all about the creative and that's what I'm going to be um, running through with all of you today. So let me just present. You should be able to see a screen shortly. Okay, great. Perfect. So when this opportunity came up for this property, um, for us to acquire the property, we, um, I remember walking in with Sinjin and Murray and a couple of our other team members, and we were um, obviously blown away by the location itself. So as Sinjin's really pointed out um, in his presentation, Greenpoint um, as a suburb is well sought after and it really it really is um it's probably our highest um our where we get the the biggest demand for so when we found this property um we we absolutely loved it from the get-go um, and what we could really see was our consumer um, staying there so it just felt like it had really good bones um, and it felt like something it felt really felt like a property that would fit well into our um, into our set of locations um, so as Sinjins mentioned it is a co-living property so um, it is you know not kind of your hotel type of property but not um not our long-term properties either so it has 10 rooms um, and that can function it can function either as a villa by itself or it can function as separate um separate bedrooms so what was the property like on our acquisition so of course we were blown away by what it looked like but um, and the the potential that it held because it really felt like it had it had the most potential. But um, you know, and like properties that have been owned for a while and run for years or even decades, we really did see that it was tired, it was weary. Um, you know, spaces that required maintenance, um, and it was being run as you know a very much an old school bed and breakfast, so an old school, um, traditional short term um, rental property. Um, a lot of the you know fixtures and um, the kind of design, it um, it you know it, it was very clear it had been done um, a while back, um, and it just felt like it needed a refresh um, and it needed a bit of an upgrade. So um, what we, you know, when we looked at the property and what we had to do for it, um, we took over in about October last year and we knew that the summer season was coming up. And with that being, you know, the first summer season after COVID, we knew that 
it was going to be extremely busy in Cape Town. And we could already see from our, you know, we could see from about the July period, we could see that bookings into December, we were going to be fully booked um, across our locations. So with that in mind, we decided to do a phased approach of our renovation, which is not something that we always do. But because this property um, came to us in fairly good um, in fairly good nick, we decided to do it in this phased approach. So with that in mind, we started our phase one soft upgrade in October with the intention to open in, um, in December last year, which is what we did. So we, when looking at the property, um, the design and what we were going to do to it, we always have to keep in mind, you know, the, what, who our consumer is. So the modern consumer, the modern traveler, um, the digital nomad, the remote worker. So whether that's a person from, you know, somewhere around South Africa or whether that's an international traveler, um, you know, we have to keep that in mind. So. Sinjin mentioned earlier, he referred to the fact that we have both short term and medium term rentals. And this is what we call um, sort of a hybrid property model. So when we refer to hybrid, we are referring to the fact that someone can stay for one night, but they can also stay for um, three months or they can stay for a year if they'd like to. So what this means is that a property has to then function um, in a way that is suitable for both someone staying for just a night, you know, where they need more of those soft, um, sorry, those um, short term, um, those short term kind of requirements. But then at the same time, we also needed to um, be useful and functional for a person staying for three months. So in this way, it's really important to balance design and balance function. And that's where, you know, our team really works well together. You know, we work on the creative side and we have to fit into budgets um, and we also have to fit into um, function and make sure that things are really working for the consumer. So with that in mind, here is a here is the front of the property. You'll see that um, we kept this really simple um, just added our, our um, branding on the side and um, decided to not, um, you know, some of you guys might have seen our other locations where we've done, you know, big murals um, or, you know, big paint um, type of feature walls. And for this property, we decided to keep it um, more simple um, and lean into the tranquil, um, tropical um, vibes that the property um, um, exudes. So this, um, this was kind of the design intent behind it. You know, when you look at this, you're looking at something very tropical. Um, it feels like a retreat. It feels like a sanctuary. Um, so we, we used the property itself um, as, the, as the inspiration behind the design. And we didn't want to veer too much away from that um, because there's already so much um, beauty and potential here. So when you walk into this courtyard, um, this is on the ground floor, and you walk through into this courtyard, it feels like you're being transported to you know, a different place. It's peaceful. Um, it's quiet, a beautiful place to sit, um, and we we could really see our um, our members um, staying here. So this is kind of the design. We we stuck with this um, with this feeling, these neutrals, um, um, kind of keeping that sanctuary, keeping that peaceful um, vibe, and um, going with that. So. Um, when we looked at the renovation, we looked at um, the furniture that was there and we kind of decided what could we use, what did we need to um, sell or um, what could, um, you know, what needed to be thrown away. So um, when looking at our, when looking at properties and seeing what we can um, use, we really do lean again into that adaptive reuse type of um type of theme where we take what we can reuse instead of buying new um, and that's a big part it's a it's a big theme of our of our design so you'll see here there are there are certain pieces um in this work lounge that we that we decided to keep but we um also and you know to kind of keep the history of the building 
as well as um, as well as to keep um, to cut costs down. But at the same time, we have also modernized it, um, added modern um, mirrors, um, modern artwork, um, and a bit more a bit more of our style. And. So here you'll see a bit of the, um, the kitchen that we renovated and you'll also see um, more of the dining and workspace. And this was a big, this was a big um, part of the renovation and a big part of changing the use of the property. So the property um, came to us and this was previously used as a staff kitchen. Um, and now what we needed to do is use this um, very small space that we had available and make it um, usable for our guests um, and actually to be accessible to anyone who enters the property. So um, there was this um, kind of kitchen space and the space opposite it. And what we did here is we made it completely open, completely um, usable for, for our guests with all the kind of um, it's a fully equipped kitchen for um, for people to use, and just opposite you'll um, you don't see it here, but there is a dry goods um, kind of locker section, and that's for our longer stay members to be able to keep their um, to keep their items. They don't have to keep it in their rooms; they can keep it in these lockers, and um, you know still have. The, a, you know, a fully functioning kitchen um, and, you know, something that they can make them feel like they're at home. Um, but instead, it's actually, a, you know, a shared kitchen. And so still leaning, again, like Sinjin said, on those shared economy principles. So other parts that we of the of the upgrade that we did to make this um, more friendly for the the modern consumer is we added a laundry area which is um, for our guests, and this uses um, a technology enabled snap scan integration. So these are really amazing machines that um, are tumble dryers and washers that our guests can use, and we have them at almost all of our locations, um, and they're really fantastic for um for guests to be able to use and um, because it's an integration with a qr code and payment is direct through there and then other really really important um things which are not on the specifically the creative and design side but still important for function are the access control and the wi-fi so in terms of access control we um we added our um a, um, our technology enabled um, facial recognition. So some of you, um, if you visited our properties, you would have seen um, that at the, some of the entrances, um, the way that you get in is via facial recognition. And um, most of our customers um, love this, um, makes them feel really safe, um, you know, and, and um, just makes it really easy to enter without having an actual key. So that was a big part of our upgrade. Um, another part of the upgrade um, is the Wi-Fi. Uh, what we have found, um, you know, since we started Neighborhood, is that Wi-Fi is pretty much um, at the top of everyone's list over absolutely anything else. So as long as there's good Wi-Fi, um, you know, everyone's sorted. So this was really important to us. The Wi-Fi at this specific property was really shocking and so we had to bring it up to um bring it up to our own standard um which we did and then obviously we're in greenpoint so unfortunately um this area is um does get affected by load shedding um a couple of our other properties um that are in the cbd and Avartica, they don't get affected by load shedding but um, this property does. So we have put in um, a battery operated system where our Wi-Fi can continue during all those load shedding times. So just to wrap up on the phase one um, approach to the soft upgrade, we leaned into those themes of um, making it as tropical and as much of a sanctuary as possible. And we did really, really small um, upgrades like doing painting feature walls um, we added laptop safes in the rooms and um, we did a little refurbishment to the courtyard area and then just a just a reupholstering of the bed bases and reupholstering of the headboards and that um, was the summary of phase one and then we opened for season in december which was um which was amazing and we have pretty much almost 
um, been fully booked since then. And um, so basically, as Sinjin mentioned again, the, the plan was then once this long booking that we've had now with a, a big group booking, the plan was always to now start our phase two. So we are actually, the timing of this webinar is um, actually really interesting because we are about to start our phase two um, soft upgrade to the property. Uh, we're starting it um, this, uh, this coming um, Friday. So the team has been working on, you know, the um, these types of uh, the types of items that we'll be upgrading um, in the second um, the second renovation. So we're starting it now, and um, we have quite a lot of um, quite a lot of things in mind to do, but also still keeping in mind our budget and keeping in mind that we don't want to be um, off the market for too long. So we've given ourselves a three to four week um, timeline to get it done. Hopefully we'll be um, hopefully we'll be finished sooner, but that's our timeline at the moment. So the plan for this for the phase two is to do a full repaint of the entire interior of the building. Um, we, we weren't able to do that the first time, so we just did feature walls in the, in the rooms the first time. But this time it'll mean a full repaint of the entire interior. Um, some areas we'll be upgrading um, the flooring. Um, where you know where there hasn't been um, great maintenance, or where we feel that the look the look of it um, isn't exactly what you know what we're wanting. So the overall look and feel that we are going for. Um, this is just to show you um, a bit of a background into our design process. Is um, sort of the it's a soft, serene, leaning into the naturals and um, leaning into the neutrals as well. So you'll see we looking at very soft greens, soft sage, um, a bit of the kitten, kitten white, which is an off white, and then sort of a milky top. Um, and you'll see very still keeping it neutral with tiny pops of color, but really um, um, using plants to bring in the greens as well and keeping it natural. Um, this is an example of just a floor layout that our interior designer um, has been using and um, has created. Um, you'll see to the left there, there has where she's indicated where our um, furniture will be going and um, according to the size of the room. And to the right, you'll see those are wall elevations and that indicates um, where the feature walls will be painted or, you know, indicates um, where the different colors of the, the paint are going. So this is a very simplified version of um of what it of what gets sent to our contractors um you know whether they are being sent for costings or whether they're being sent for for actual measurements or to show them where you know where paint is going and this is just to show you a bit of the of the background of the design process um, it's obviously quite detailed um, and our our interior designer um, she's incredible um, she's will send very, very detailed layouts so that contractors um, and the teams working know exactly um, exactly what to do and exactly um, how to how to um, do the paint and all of that stuff. Um, that will include that will also include fittings, it will include where electric points are being added or changed um, and that type Kim, of thing. Kim, sorry to interrupt you there. I see there's just been a question uh, posted in the chat. Uh, so the question is, is the project work done with an internal team or outsourced? Uh, very good question. Um, you know, obviously your design team are responsible for executing this, this work. Maybe you can just tell everyone for, for everyone's benefit, you know, how that team looks and, and what roles are internal with the team and, and what we use external help for. Sure. So um, the this has differed um, from you know from our first project to now, um, but we have previously on um, other projects worked with um, many external suppliers. 
So that will, the type of suppliers will really depend on the project um, and how vast it is um, and, you know, the budget and things like that. So sometimes we'll work with a much smaller team, but other times we'll be working with a full team. So it'll be an external QS, um, external um, electricians, um, external plumbers, contractors, um, you know, a full construction team, um, an architect, um, and you know interior designer um, but you know, it, that will it, it does differ depending on the project um, and up until now we've been working with a lot of external um, contractors but we have recently um, started our own you know in-house interior design team um, which has been really great so we do have an internal interior designer um, and we do have an internal um, facilities team and um, an internal um, development manager. So those um, those people are internal and they form part of our, our neighborhood team and they work across all projects. And then we will, um, that team itself will then outsource um, certain aspects of the project. So in this case, we have outsourced to contractors for um, whether it's um, for plumbing, electrics, painting, and that type of thing. Um, on this specific project, we don't have um, an architect and we don't have a QS um, at all because um, the, the nature of the refurb isn't, um, isn't huge. Um, and they aren't, we're not doing anything that requires council approval. So we don't, um, we don't have to go into that much, um, into that much detail. Um, so it's just um, our interior designer who's, per, you know, predominantly doing um, working on this um, renovation. But um, sometimes it'll be a much bigger, a much bigger team. So it does depend. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thanks, Kim. I think just just to elaborate, you know, on the decision for internalizing some of those functions, um, essentially, because these projects are generally quite tight in terms of timeline, you know, we need to get them, you know, from trans taking transfer of the property, we need to renovate them within 90 days or less and, and have them back on the market and revenue generating again. And we also are very limited in terms of our capital available for these renovations. So our model is is a simple one. It's it's a yield on on uh, capex spent. And if we unable to uh, achieve our numbers, you know the the capex upgrade either in the purchase price or the capital upgrade needs to be looked at in detail. And often that needs to happen even before the project gets a go ahead. So this is what in term, terms of internalizing design and project management with Kim and, and her team, and I'm always amazed at what you guys uh, can achieve with these properties in a short space of time, uh, especially with, with the internalization of those functions, is that just allows us to even look at a property and do layouts and do all of those things before we even, you know, acquire the property because we, it's not like, you know, we're having to brief a designer and then a designer is having to be appointed. And then if the project doesn't go ahead, so those are the reasons why we internalize this. And, and one of the nice surprises has been an increase in efficiency and turnaround and also control. I think, you know, Kim's got a great vision for the brand and she, she understands these spaces and how they need to translate to the consumer. And uh, with, with external designers, sometimes you have sort of like a little bit of an ego where they're wanting to achieve, you know, what they believe that the, the, the property needs to achieve. And it, although we built beautiful properties, with the with the designers and we continue to work with them sometimes it's, it's nicer to have that control especially with these smaller properties uh where the, where the budget is quite sensitive perfect um kim are you uh, i won't interrupt you again you can carry on <laughs> thanks Sinjin. um yeah you're 100 correct it's been it's been really great to have our own um internal team um especially on the design side of things um and i think it has helped um it, you know, on our on another project, um, which I won't go into too much detail now, but we've been um, having an internal um, designer has meant that we've been able to start on the design months before um, we months before transfer of the property um, took place, um, months before we were even able to access it. So. 
we, you know, she was working with um, bunches of videos that one of our um, team members was able to take um, and then, you know, kind of working through that. So it's been it's been really great for for us to um, be able to also work, you know, on a number of projects simultaneously and um, also use um, those same contractors across sites and um, be able to be really efficient there. So um, I won't, um, I know that we are um, pressed for time, so I won't um, take too much longer, but just to, um, just to run through the final few slides in terms of our phase two upgrade, um, you'll see that this is the look and feel for our lounge and workspace. Um, and again, we'll be using um, furniture that, some of the furniture that's there, but also adding um, furniture that, um, that we will procure on our side. And um, this, um, you'll see we've um, added a little neon sign here. So uh, the, this might not be the exact phrase that we go for, but um, we, in terms of, you know, we wanting to inject our own brand um, and bringing properties up to a brand standard. Um, you know, a lot of you who know the Neighborhood brand, you might know that um, we we do have quite a unique style. Um, it's we're a little bit quirky, um, still always keeping fun, keeping the fun in things, um, and also just trying to be really appealing to the modern consumer. So, this um, neon sign here. Um, you know, for, for quite a neutral property, this neon sign is kind of just injecting a little bit of that quirkiness, that neighborhood quirkiness into the property. So the final few slides um, are just showing you a bit of the kind of the, the rooms themselves and the upgrades that we'll be doing there. So a lot of that is, um, you know, we'll be upgrading the headboards, so doing completely new headboards. Um, we'll be upgrading the light fittings. Um, changing those, um, changing, adding soft furnishings, um, cushions, throws, things like that. Um, we we are also changing. Uh, one of the big things that we're changing um, this time is we are replacing the beds. So we have a really, really great bed supplier who we've been working with um, for about a year now. And we at this property, all of the beds are queen sizes. And we will actually be upgrading them to um, King Twins. So this means that we, this allows essentially for a lot more flexibility with bookings. It means that we can have um, a double occupancy with two different people who aren't necessarily a couple, you know, and they can, we can, we can convert the room to two singles um, or twins as we call it. Um, but then we can also convert them back to a king um, when, when needed. So this just allows for our flexibility um, throughout the year we found that we've recently been, especially in the winter time, been receiving a, a lot of bookings for a double occupancy room. And so where we can, we've decided now to upgrade our properties to, you know, to come to that, um, to, to come to that standard so that we can offer um, as much as we can um, in terms of the in terms of the various properties and and um, the occupancy there. So just to carry on running through the rooms, you'll see that we are keeping with the, the off-white, the sages, the greens, very neutral. You'll see a bit of the um, a bit of a rattan type of headboard. Um, and also the same with the pendants. So that it's kind of very much the bringing the outside in. So we've got this beautiful, um, beautiful tropical kind of outdoor courtyard. Um, and we, we still wanted to keep that inside, so keeping the greens inside, keeping it really peaceful, um, really, um, really fresh, um, so that each little room in itself is its own little sanctuary. And at the same time, also using very natural materials like the rattan. So again, here, um, the greens, um, you'll see this kind of rattan Malawi chair, and then um, a bit of a pop with the artwork here in the black and white, and a bit of the mustard um, bolster cushion. And then similar, similar style over here. And then again here with the light greens. So that um, kind of wraps up 
the phase two soft upgrade that we'll be doing. Um, if any of you have any questions on the design, please feel free to um, pop them in the chat and I can either answer them um, answer them uh, afterwards or um, Sinjin can answer them um, during his section. Perfect. Thanks, Kim. Thank you for taking us through. Uh, again, like I said, I'm always amazed at what you and your team achieve and the detail that you guys go through. I mean, if you just even compare my presentation to yours, they are very, very different. Obviously, you've got a very, very strong design skill set and, and we're very lucky to have you on the team. Um, so, so I just wanted to say thanks. Great, everyone. Just to go back to the actual opportunity that we've got available at the moment uh, in Greenpoint, we sort of, Kim's taken you through the design that was uh, was done to the property and we've given you a sort of a brief snapshot. Now we'll move into what the financial and investment uh, detail looks like for the property. This isn't uh, a co fully comprehensive. These are just certain snapshots out of our investment brochure. We've got a very detailed investment brochure for the property that outlines all the investment aspects and as well as a full investment prospectus, which is registered with SIPSI, as I mentioned earlier on the call, all of that is available on our investment portal. Um, or we can, if you drop a, a message just in the chat saying you, you want to be sent the brochure, if you haven't received it already, uh, then we can connect with you and, and send you that detail. Perfect. I've explained the acquisition costs, the equity requirement and the, and, um, and the debt over the property. The debt is provided by FMB Commercial Property Finance. We've got a very strong relationship with them and they finance the majority of our properties. Not all, we do have some properties that are financed through one of the other banks. And we do go to the other banks from time to time to make sure the offers are competitive. But the relationship that we built with FNB, they really understand the model and they back the team uh, in terms of, of the properties that we've done together to date. And they understand it and they have the most, uh, their debt is the most beneficial to ours in terms of you know, seeing ourselves through that renovation period and then the what we call the lease up, the period to which the property gets stable. Um, and and that works works for us. And it is something that you know we're looking at growing a larger relationship with them. But we'll still be going out to the other banks to make sure that uh, you know we are getting the best possible deal for each property. The yield for the property is about eight and a half percent based on our projected income and expense numbers. The total return or IR being 16.2%. That is the total return of all cash flows over the period of the investment, which is five years for this property. Year one revenue is just under 3 million Rand. Year one expenses 1.7 and net income just under 1.3 million Rand before income and uh, before interest and tax. What does that mean for an investment from you? We, uh, for a typical 100,000 Rand investment, the cash flow, we've got a detailed schedule of the cash flows. Again, you don't need to look at this in too much detail. It will be on the recording and it's on our detailed investment brochure, uh, which you're welcome to go through and ask any questions you may have. In terms of the uh, cash flows at the end of the day, what those look like. So for your 100,000 Rand investment that you make today, you're just over 4,300 Rand in year one in dividends. Those dividends are paid every six months, um, increasing to year two, 5,600 Rand, all the way to year five, 9,000 Rand, plus uh, the realization of the capital appreciation over that period, uh, being the larger cash flow back at the end of the day, just under 170,000 Rand. These are after capital gains tax in the vehicle, um, as well as tax to the company, uh, like I've mentioned before. Your investment is into the company and your shares. This is essentially the only asset or the largest asset that the company owns is some smaller assets like, you know, the, the um, bank account, etc. But this is the asset that the prop that generates the revenue for the company. And these are the revenue and expenses associated with running that property. That includes all our management fees for running the property, salaries and wages, repairs and maintenance, property rates, insurance, uh, all aspects of running the property. And then those are the dividends that you get back at the, at the end of the period, translates into about a 16.2% projected RR. 
And in simple terms, what does that look like? It's two times your capital back over the period of the investment. So if you invest 100,000 Rand with us today, it's 200,000 Rand um, investment or 200,000 Rand in, in cash flows back. I see there are some questions again from Liam. How the question is, how are the property income and expenses calculated? And if the projections are not achieved, do investors need to pay in further funds? So the answer to the second answer to that question, simple uh, answer to that is no, investors are not expected to pay any further uh, investments into the property beyond the initial investment. If for whatever reason, the property does not generate sufficient revenue to meet its operating costs, for an abnormal reason, like you've got certain units that you need to modify that, you, that we weren't projecting or an extensive repair and maintenance where we've got to block off units or things like that. Um, our holding company, uh, which owns our shares in, in the, the majority of our assets, it will provide a loan facility to that property company to see itself through that period until cash flows return to normal. Once cash flows return to normal, then that debt can be repaid um, at that point in time. So we do not require any further levies or uh, contributions from investors, only your initial capital investment over the term of your investment, which is five years. Uh, second question, Liam, what happens after the five year period? Is the property sold? What happens after the five year period? There are essentially two things that can happen. Uh, option A is that the property is sold. So we have the property marketed, uh, sorry, valued every, every, every year independently. We will value it in the year as directors. And then at the end of each year, we will have an independent property value of value of the property. At the end of the five year period, it would be valued and placed on the market and sold and proceeds would be distributed to shareholders. In the second scenario, if towards the end of the five year period, we believe it holds longer term value as a neighbor good location, we will then recommend to the shareholders that we vote to stay invested in the property for the further five years. And based on that vote, if 75% of the investors say no, despite what we say is we, we believe it holds longer term value, they still wish to exit the asset, it will revert back to scenario A. The property will be sold and proceeds will be distributed to shareholders. If the investors choose to stay invested in the property, then it would be renewed and they would have the option to acquire the outgoing shareholders shares at the market value for those shares at the time. So after five years, you are able to sell your share and there's a mechanism uh, for that. If for whatever reason, those investors choose not to take up those options, but still wish to be invested with their current shares, then it will, they will be offered to the greater co-ownership market in terms of other properties that we have for investment. And after that, they can be uh, made on the open market and we can bring new investors into those uh, properties. Um, Liam, sorry, I'm not going to type in the chat because I'm, I'm just presenting the last two slides. But if you feel that you need more detail or haven't asked the questions, just let me know and, and I'll try and um, give you some more detail. How do these returns compare to similar investment types? Uh, investing in the JSC All Share, which is a, an index of, a, of the, the JSC listed uh, sector. And Though and the listed property sector, the listed property sector being our benchmark return generally for property in, in South Africa. The JSC over the last five years is at about a 5% annualized return, um, just, just under 1.3 times capital invested and listed property unfortunately hasn't performed well over the last five years. Majority of that being impacted by um, you know, COVID and that period and, you know, period of, of slow economic growth in South Africa and residential property certainly outperforming, uh, you know, those sectors over that period, specifically in Cape Town and the Western Cape. It's why we are focusing heavily on Cape Town and the Western Cape. We've got no aspirations at this point to invest in any property outside of the borders of the Western Cape. Uh, we've got a few investments that we've made in places like Franchuk and other areas where we believe there's pockets of value to be had, um, but we won't be investing further outside of the Western Cape. We just don't believe at this point the fundamentals are there. And we also don't believe that our core target market, you know, is necessarily traveling to those areas for any extensive point of time. They, you know, may be traveling there for a 
in a couple of days to see this or to um, you know go to the Kruger up north or wherever the case may be um, but they you know they're not looking to sort of stay there for two two weeks to three months which is our call stay period perfect that brings us to the end of our webinar just in time um, if you do have any questions, please, again, just a reminder that you can join a one-on-one -on -one call with myself. I'm trying to make myself as available as many of those calls as possible personally. Uh, we do have a head of investments that's joined us. Uh, in fact, he'll be on, on a lot of the calls post the 1st of September, um, and, and he will be coming on board to, to manage investor relationships. Um, his name is Ryan. He's a really, really nice guy. And if you do wish another call with me, please book another call. Um, if, you, if there's any information you need from me, please drop an email to invest at neighborgood.ca.za and I'll try and get back to you guys as soon as possible with the details. Our investor portal is live, like I mentioned, on our website. So you can go over to our website and click on invest and you can get access, register for our portal and get access to the detail. Uh, we do recommend that you join a call before that so we can answer any questions you may have, talk you through the process. The investor portal is very new. We've just launched it um, and, uh, and we'll be refining that portal as we go to make sure that it meets the needs of our investments over time. A lot of people have asked when we're going to be presenting the, the next opportunity. We are hoping to launch the next property in September for investment. And... Um, that will be communicated very shortly. We are going to be holding one more webinar before this specific subscription closes. So we are going to be holding a webinar on uh, the tax implications of investing in property with us and, and, uh, and directly in property for uh, if you're looking at buying an apartment for whatever reason. Um, we will be holding a webinar hopefully within the next two weeks on, on those details. So please look out for that. Our subscription for this Romney property that we've presented today, it is fairly pre-committed in terms of reserved shares. We're just waiting for some investors to take up those uh, reserved shares with us, uh, and then we can release further shares uh, if, if, if they do not take those shares up. Uh, we do have a couple spots left uh, for investment. So if you are interested, please, the closing date is the 3rd of September. So we would need funds before the 3rd of September, um, but we can we can reserve those shares for you if needed. We did have about, uh, in the end, 90% of our shares were uh, reserved pre uh, in pre-commitments before the subscription opened. And, uh, and we're hoping to close all of those out. Um, but in the event that any investor doesn't take up those shares, we'll certainly um, make you guys aware to see if uh, new investors would be interested to, to take up the call. I see there are a few new investors on the group uh, or on the call, uh, which is great to see you. More than welcome to reach out to me and I'll, I'll give you all the details that you may need. Thanks everyone. We hope you have a great rest of the day and a great week and we'll be in contact shortly. Thanks, Kim. Thanks so much for taking the time to take us through the presentation. Um, we look forward to the next project. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.